Hi guys, thanks for joining Gina's grooming channel and another episode of our vlog. Uh, this vlog is where we discuss grooming industry subjects for pet lovers, pet geeks, and for aspiring groomers. Today's subject is going to be a big one and we're going to be having a lot of discussions, a lot of offshoots about this discussion, but we are going to be dealing with matting. Matting is definitely one of the top reasons why dogs have unnecessary pain when they go get groomed. Um, matting can also cause pain just by it sitting on a dog's body. So we're going to go ahead and wage war on matting because we absolutely can win this war and it's for the comfort of our pets. Now, if uh, knowing that matting can cause pain to dogs and again is the number one reason why dogs have unnecessary pain in grooming. Um, I also want to say that under matting, I have discovered after shaving down matted dogs, a whole host of problems that can exist that you can't see, um, such as a uh, gaping sores, uh, infected sores, fungal infections. Um, I've seen hosts of parasites, families of parasites residing under matted coats. Uh, I've seen thorns that are embedded in dog skin. So we definitely have to manage this better. And as a pet loving community, we absolutely can do better and we should do better. So let's go ahead, jump in, talk about what matting is. And then we're going to talk about from a grooming perspective, how we deal with this matting and how we make decisions about how we deal with that matting and then we're going to go ahead and finish up with what we need to do as dog owners as pet owners um, to partner with our groomer and when the dog is taken home when your pet is taken home what you need to do to keep the process going as a partnership for the health and wellness of your pet now for people who have gotten this and I have so many customers that maybe have started out not understanding uh, how detrimental matting can be and have come down that road and now completely understand I want to say a big thank you uh, your dogs love you much much more for it but this gives us hope that with information and targeted action we can go ahead and conquer matting Without further ado let's go ahead and jump in and talk about what these evil and heinous mats are Okay, so the first step in our war against mats is getting to know the enemy. So matting is just clumps of hair. Pretty simple, right? But these clumps of hair can become medical issues very fast. Um, they also can be painful on a dog's skin. So we're looking at tangles of hair, right? Balls of tangles. And what happens often um, is that dead hair gets caught in live hair and causes these clumps that can reside either farther from the dog's skin, so we'll see that with tangles, or with thick mats that um, go ahead and sit on a dog's skin and can cause medical issues issues um, so and also can cause a lot of pain in the mobility of a pet and sometimes what you see is a dog can be completely what we call pelted um, and what you'll see is a dog will have about this much of coat that looks like it's brushed out um, but underneath all that brushed out coat is this thick pelt of coat that is almost uh, stuck to the skin um, and that is a medical issue and we have to deal with that. So let's go ahead and talk about what types of actions groomers can do to go ahead and deal when uh, with a matted dog when it comes into their salon. So with mats, we really have three choices um, and a combination of all those are really what usually happens. So we have a choice of either brushing out or dematting a dog um, or a pet. Um, we also have the choice of spot shaving. So going ahead and shaving out dogs in certain areas. And also the third choice that we have is either do a short haircut or shave. So let's go ahead and talk about each one of these choices. Okay, so if a dog is able to be brushed out, and we're going to talk about factors that can determine that, I want to talk about dematting. It's not just brushing out. Dematting, uh, depending on the breed, usually involves much more than just a brush and a comb and some conditioning agent. You also have dematting tools, so you'll see dematting rakes, you'll see dematting knives, um, all of these uh, tools. You'll see long pin slicker brushes, uh, a whole array of tools that you need to demat certain types of coats, um, and of course with dematting because of these sh the sharpness of these tools is you elevate the chances of um, going ahead and causing injury to a dog. So be aware of that. Um, dematting is also not 100% pain free. We have to go ahead and find those mats uh, sometimes with a comb. We, would, we can go ahead and brush but we don't know exactly where those mats are. So just be aware that dematting does have a little bit of danger associated with it. Your dog can step on a piece of equipment that's sharp. Um, you can go ahead and scratch a dog. So it's not 100% pain-free. It's also not 100% injury-free. So be aware that those factors exist. 
Okay, so the next way that we can go ahead and deal with matting is spot shaving. So you'll see in a lot of parts of a, a dog's coat is we'll go ahead and see matting in the groin, in the armpits, and that's areas where you go ahead and spot shave a dog. Um, so we take a clipper, go ahead and clipper out those mats. Also for longer coated dogs that maybe have a really good coat, but they just have like little mats all around and we can go ahead and spot shave and do a comb over. We'll go ahead and do that. And now the third and most dramatic option is to shave a dog. Um, when I I'm talking about shaving normally we need to get a blade under those mats that's how it works so we can get through most matting severe matting with a number seven a number five so a number seven is about three millimeters so it's not all the way to the skin now sensitive places uh, that get matted like ears uh, groins um, areas like that we usually have to go ahead and take it with a number 10 and I will give an example that I've had to do medical uh, grooming on cats where I've had to do a 30 and a 40 under medical supervision because the mats have been so bonded to the skin so be aware that normally we can go ahead and shave under a dog a dog's coat or a cat's coat with a number seven sometimes a number ten um, so we leave a little bit of peach fuzz now sometimes, and we're going to talk about factors that allow us to determine uh, whether or not we need to shave or do the other options that we can as a groomer, is we can also do a short haircut. So sometimes instead of shaving a dog, we can go ahead and do, let's say, a number four guide comb all over the body. Now, as I mentioned before, in those three uh, different variables that we have, different choices that we have to deal with matting, we usually deal with a combination of the three. So um, a lot of times you'll see shaving the body completely down, but dematting the face, dematting the ears, dematting the tail so that the dog still looks cute, um, but definitely we'll do another like a combination of the three. One thing I want to talk about shaving, very important, is that don't think that that's the easiest option at all times. Um, with shaving, you also increase the injury, the likelihood of injury to your dog, because now you can go ahead and nick a dog. If a dog has moles or bumps, you're going down all the way to the skin. Know that that increases the likelihood of injuring a dog, so that's not great either. Um, so be careful of that. A note also to new uh, groomers and aspiring groomers, if you decide, okay, you know what, I'm just gonna take the easy way out, I'm just gonna go ahead and shave dogs, uh, it doesn't matter if uh, they are, the owner doesn't uh, agree with me, I'm gonna go ahead and shave dogs without authorization. This is one of the worst things that you can do. I know you're trying to do well for the dog's well-being um, and remove those mats. You always need to have authorization from an owner because um, if a dog is picked up by an owner and it is shaved completely to the skin and you didn't get authorization and prepare the owner, and we are gonna have some uh, speeches and some discussions with owners about their dogs um, and how they should act when they pick up a shaved dog. But if you, as an aspiring groomer and a starting groomer, start shaving dogs down with auth authorization, Think about what happens to the dog. Uh, so the dog gets picked up. It's been a good boy. It's been standing on the table for hours, getting shaved down, getting washed. The owner now picks up the dog and they're not expecting a shaved dog. This uh, is one of the worst things you can do for a dog because the owner starts yelling. They're pointing at the dog. They bring the dog home. They're yelling at the dog sometimes for hours, sometimes for days. I'm not kidding you. So know that if you are gonna shave a dog down, you need to get authorization from the owner and you need to use the words shave or a very short haircut. Whatever is relevant to what you're gonna be doing, very important for the happiness and wellness of the pet because you don't wanna confuse the pet and have an angry owner I'll go ahead and take it out on a pet undeservingly. And the last and final note I want to talk about shaving uh, is there are dogs that you absolutely cannot shave uh, or you should not shave unless it's absolutely medically necessary. Now, these are our double, uh, double coated, thick double coated breeds, such as Huskies or Samoyeds. So shaving this kind of coat is very, very bad. I will say that I will allow a spot shaving of this type of coat. So let's say a dog has um, spots in his groin, a thick double coated dog. I'll go ahead, shave the groin but I will always, always go ahead and brush out and demat the dogs. The way that the top coat is compared to the undercoat, if it gets stuck, it really is a process to brush out that coat. So it may take many hours. You may have to talk to your clients and have them come back to do it in sessions, but you need to go ahead and focus what is right for those types of dogs. So know that shaving is really not an option for your thick double coated breeds because it will break that coat and is really the wrong thing to do for that type of a dog. 
Okay, so now that we know that we have three main choices and we can do a combination of them when dealing with a matted dog, again, so that is dematting, uh, spot shaving, or complete shave or short haircut for the full body, um, let's go ahead and talk about some of the factors that help us determine what we're going to do when a dog comes into a salon matted. Okay, first and foremost, we're going to be talking about the dog sensitivity level to dematting and brushing. Uh, this is very real. So dogs vary in how tender their skin is when uh, their coats are being brushed or dematted. And this is going to determine exactly what course of action we're going to take with that dog. So even if you take a look and you're saying, we'll talk about the other factors, this dog is definitely brushable. We can demat this dog. But the moment you put a brush on that dog and it feels a snarl and this dog wants to jump off the table, this dog is not a good candidate for dematting. Um, so we need to call the owner and talk to them very honestly and let them know uh, that their dog is really not tolerant of any dematting or brushing process. Now, for owners that want a long-haired dog, uh, we'll talk about this at the last chapter of our discussion. There are choices for you, but involves work from you. Um, but again, not too much work. We just have to be a little more diligent. So know that if your dog is very sensitive to brushing and dematting, you either want to keep it in a short puppy cut, listen to your groomer, or you want to go ahead and learn brushing and combing techniques to be able to go ahead and keep your dog the way you want it aesthetically. So now that we've determined that your dog is actually tolerant to brushing and dematting, let's go ahead and take a look further at the factors that we look at to determine which of the three options we're going to go ahead and do to deal with this type of coat. So let's look at the type of coat and breed type. So different breeds have different types of coats. And I will tell you right now, terriers are a lot easier to brush out than our poodle breeds. Um, so terriers, usually they kind of snarl and usually those mats are a little farther from the body. Um, so you can go ahead with conditioner, holding the root, have a really good way of brushing out a lot of terrier coats. Some terrier coats are at the point of no return and have to be completely shaved, but know that the majority of them that I have seen can be brushed out much differently than we have our poodles or our poodle mixes. Um, again, we talked about thick double coated breeds. We have to brush those out unless a doctor said it's medically necessary, unless a vet says you got to shave it. Um, so know that that automatically goes into they're going to be brushed out phase no matter how long that takes. But for our poodles, and more importantly, I will tell you for our poodle mixes, so our doodles, I am going to have a separate discussion for our doodle owners out there. It's going to come from a place of love. You guys are kind of new uh, with a newer designer uh, dog right now. So it definitely merits to have a discussion with you um, about your doodles. But basically poodles, um, they go ahead with their coarse coats and then doodles with their finer coats. And you never know what kind of mix you're going to get with your doodles they have the tendency the most to go ahead and clump all the way to the skin. You'll also see this in fine drop coats, um, a lot of matting and a lot of tangling that basically can get all the way down to the skin. So that takes us to our third uh, question that we have when it comes to matting, which is how far are these mats away from the skin? Now, if mats are all the way to the skin, um, that's really difficult to demat. If they're sitting farther from the skin like a terrier, we may be able to get away with a short cut or a short puppy cut even sometimes. So sometimes a dog will come in and I'll be like, hmm, I can get a two under all those mats and I can go ahead and do a puppy cut. That is awesome. That's kind of a win-win. The customer is usually happy and the dog's happy. We remove the mats. So love when that happens. But sometimes there is no hope and the dog is matted to the skin, which doesn't mean that we need to shave the dog all the way to the skin because there is another factor involved, which we're going to go ahead and talk about. So the next factor is what percentage of the body is covered with this matting. So if a dog just has a clump, let's say on their shoulder or um, on their leg, it's a very small percentage of the body. With a groomer that knows how to demat uh, very pain-free, uh, you can go ahead and demat. We have some videos out on that to go ahead and demat a certain part of the body, so a small percentage of the body. So let's go ahead and look at another factor that exists um, when we're determining whether or not we're going to brush, spot shave, or completely shave a dog. Um, and this exists in the terms of logistics. If you're working in a salon and you are three weeks out for your next appointment, and that's how long people are waiting on a waiting list, 
um, and you have a dog that comes in matted, the groomer has to make a decision sometimes at that moment of how much time they have in the day. And this relates to some owners know that the dog, their dog has been shaved unnecessarily. Um, the groomer should be communicative with the owner, but sometimes they're not. Um, they'll go ahead and just call an owner and say, I have to shave. I, there's no way I can go ahead and brush through or spot shave this dog. Um, and they're going to go ahead and shave the dog. But because there's a logistical factor in there just isn't enough time in the day to go ahead and demat your dog. Now, the last point that I'm going to talk about um, in determining what we're going to do with the dog when it comes in matted is going to be the groomer's, <clears throat> the groomer's experience level. So believe it or not, dematting um, painlessly and dematting uh, pain-free is an art form. Uh, as you learn to demat, you can kind of hear matting. It's almost like playing an instrument. Uh, it takes a long time to develop that skill. So your groomer's experience level is going to determine whether or not they're going to choose a certain course of action. And you're going to see a lot with novice groomers, they're going to jump to the shave much faster than spot shave and dematting, de uh, dematting and brushing for the dog because they simply just don't know any better. Okay, so now that we talked about all the points and the factors that a groomer takes when a dog comes into the salon matted, um, we're going to go ahead and talk to the dog lovers and the dog owners who are learning how to go ahead and fight this war because it's again for the comfort and wellness of your pet. Now the good news is we can get through this, but we have to get through it together. And the thing that you have to remember is that when you take the dog home, when you take your pet home, the onus is on you to go ahead and maintain the coat. The good news is that when your dog leaves the grooming salon, they are in perfect condition as long as the groomer did their job properly. So all you need to do is go ahead and maintain that coat, not only with a brush, and here's the big disconnect, is a comb. You need to go ahead with any coated breed, go ahead and put your comb into that coat. Um, once you leave that grooming salon, don't wait a few weeks. You want to go ahead and maintain it even a few days after you leave that grooming salon and go ahead and get a comb through that coat. Combs are so important that if I was going to get asked uh, which tool I'm going to use, I'm going to go ahead and throw out either my brush or I'm going to go ahead and throw out my comb for my dog. I would say Definitely use your brush because that's what catches those micro mats, the comb, you don't want catching that. But if you had to throw out one or the other, throw out the brush. The comb is going to be your most important friend to getting down into the root of that coat. And again, if you start this the second, third day after your coated dog comes home from the groomer, you're going to ha have this open coat that's not going to be able to tangle and mat, and you're going to release all of that coat, all of that dead coat that needs to come out. Again, brush and comb is the way you do it. But if you comb down, don't forget your comb. You're going to be very successful with this. So now let's say your dog comes home and it's shaved and you acted perfectly with your dog when you saw it and gave it lots of love because the dog was past the point of no return, your dog or your cat. Um, now what's important to know is don't stop your brushing routine. Don't stop your combing routine. Uh, your dog may be shaved and you don't want to brush it with a slicker brush, but get a rubber cur curry brush. Get a rubber brush so you don't stop that routine. Put your dog on the table or wherever you have determined where you're going to go ahead, even on your lap, and go ahead and keep that routine going because as your coated dog coat grows, you're going to go ahead and start moving on to slicker brush and comb uh, to make sure that you go ahead and brush out all that dead coat and keep that coat open so it doesn't tangle and mat. You are going to see such a huge difference in your dog's coat and your dog is going to see such a huge difference in the way it behaves in the grooming process and how it looks at grooming because it's not going to get tugged. So let's go ahead and do this together. Well, guys, I hope this gives you a lot of insight. I'll get ready for more discussions. Um, if you like this video, please click that thumbs up. If you want to be notified uh, when another video in our vlog comes up or any of our uh, training videos for grooming, make sure to subscribe. Thank you for subscribing and click that bell icon to be notified when that happens. Guys, really appreciate your time. Really, really appreciate your attention to this matter because we can win this war. It is very important that we try and that we do better. I know we can and I believe in you. Thanks again. We'll see you soon.